Welcome back. Welcome back indeed. So it looks like the future is already upon us and it's not looking too friendly. We're living in the year 2022 but it seems more like the year 2222. Scientists have publicly come forward to announce that they are growing reproductive robots that self-replicating robots in labs. Yes, these engineered robots can multiply and make copies of themselves. Scientists are calling them Xenobots, but these Xenobots are not made with metals or computer chips like you would expect. These Xenobots are living organisms that can think, eat, breathe and reproduce. The fact that these scientists are calling these things bots for me is a little bit off-putting. They shouldn't be classed as bots if they are organic, they are clones. A newly living life form that essentially is alien life. What could go wrong, right? This was always inevitable. The smarter we get, the more we want to play with life itself and create something far, far superior than ourselves, which essentially could end the human race, a species demised by its own intelligence. That may sound dramatic to some, but is this the start? We are at the top of the food chain and that is why we are here today. But even us as intelligent life, we still destroy one another. Just look at our history, nothing but bloodshed to be the strongest dominant tribe. The same goes for the animal kingdom, you must kill to survive. So why do scientists think creating a newly intelligent species won't have the same agenda? I will roll this video in a second, but what gets me about this is, if this is a brand new advancement in biological science, then why is it straight away being introduced to the public? To show the world such an achievement is to show other countries how far they have come. It's simply a message. They are far, far more deep into this than these small xenobots. I wouldn't like to speculate on how far they have progressed in this science, but I believe it runs deeper than what they are showing to the world. It's a long, informative video, so I'm going to get straight on with it and let me know your thoughts on this. Is this the start of the end or the start of something great? Maybe they could use this technology to expand the human lifespan, regenerate lost limbs and so forth. Would it be used for medical research? Who knows? Well, the answer to that, I'm afraid, is most probably not. This entire project has been funded by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. We've all heard of DARPA before. This is an interesting, mind-opening video with more information than I can give. So here it is, my friends, and I'll catch you soon. Now this afternoon, as we sat down to prepare our story list for the show, two unusual headlines caught our attention, two very interesting yet frightening stories. The first one was about self-replicating robots. Robots that can reproduce, create copies of themselves, make babies like humans do, robots. Now I don't want to jump to conclusions or question the intention of the scientists involved. But it's hard to not ask this question. Have these people never read science fiction? They're creating robots that can multiply and machines that will look like us. What could possibly go wrong? Life uh, finds a way. We'll begin with the reproductive robots. They're being nurtured in the United States. Scientists have created robots that can produce an offspring. They're calling them xenobots. This is what they look like. These tiny organisms that you see, these spherical clumps, they're xenobots. And they're not made of metal or plastic. They've been created from biological tissues, which essentially makes them living robots. Robots that can move on their own, heal on their own, and now, of course, reproduce on their own. Um, these are the world's first living robots. And they are, in fact, I would argue, something new under the sun. They tap into, help us understand ancient forces as old as life itself. These are hybrids, biological machines that represent an amazing synthesis between computer design, human insight, laboratory expertise, artificial intelligence, and the innate capabilities and mechanisms of cells. Reported last year, Xenobots are computer designed. They're hand built biological machines. They're assembled from frog cells that have been shown to be able to move on their own, find targets, retain information. And now, as you may know, in a new study published this week in PNAS, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the science team, the folks gathered here today, report 
that xenobots are able to self-replicate. It's a form of biological reproduction never seen before. How exactly were they created? In order to design these xenobots, scientists first created random 3D designs on a supercomputer, like the one that you see. Simulative blocks of skin and heart cells that can move on their own. These blocks, or configurations, were then assigned tasks through an algorithm. What kind of tasks? Like walking in a certain direction, basic things. The most promising con con configurations here, the ones that performed the tasks well, were then taken to a lab to be injected with life. Life taken from African clawed frogs. These toads that you see, they're the source of life in xenobots. The species is found in sub-Saharan Africa. It can regenerate its skin when wounded. So this is what scientists did. Take out skin and heart cells from the embryos of these organisms and then inject them into 3D blocks through tweezers and electric tools. Once injected, these blocks were kept in dishes of water to keep the frog cells alive. Not only are these creatures alive and kicking, they're reproducing. They're creating copies of themselves, just like molecules do. So what are they doing? First, they release loose cells, then they smush them into clusters, swash them with water, and if the cluster is large enough, within a few days it takes a new life. It, evol it evolves into a child xenobot. Does sound like a fun experiment, but the question is, what's the point of it? What are these xenobots for? What are they going to do? Here's a human question for these living robots. What is their purpose? Well, uh, the xenobots tend to raise more questions than they answer. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what the implications are at this point. Um, if we zoom in on a xenobot to the level of a single cell, it's not new, it's a part of a frog. But then we zoom back out and a xenobot doesn't look like or replicate like anything we've ever seen before in nature. They look more like robots building other robots, as you mentioned, more like robots than an organism reproducing. Now consider this. Right now, these organisms are reproducing. Tomorrow, they could grow nervous systems, develop a cognitive ability, take decisions on their own. And if you've seen science fiction films, you'd probably know how this ends. Not well. We're creating independent life from animal tissue. Microscopic robots that can reproduce, forget about them going rogue or evolving into something dangerous. Just imagine what happens if they end up in the wrong hands. And I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Because this experiment, the one that I just told you about, was partially funded by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. It's a federal American agency that oversees technological innovation for military use. Need I explain further? The involvement of the military in such a scientific project does not inspire trust. And uh, in fact, around the same time that the very first autonomous robots were being built in the late 1940s, scientists were thinking about whether or not it would be possible for a machine to build a copy of itself. And it wasn't at all obvious that this would be possible. Uh, many thought that it would result in a logical contradiction because it, it wasn't really clear whether or not an infinite regress of blueprints inside of blueprints for the entire possibly infinite family tree would need to be somehow stored inside of each self-reproducing machine. But in 1948, John von Neumann proved that it was indeed theoretically possible to create machines that reproduce themselves mechanically. And inspired by this, engineers have since hand-designed wooden blocks with complementary hooks and levers, robotic trains on tracks, as well as robot arms that can be set up to yield copies of themselves. And the xenobots now demonstrate something pretty cool, in my opinion, that so-called von Neumann machines can be built out of biological cells instead of synthetic materials like wood or plastic or metal, and that they can be automatically designed and optimized.